the camera. Just give it, give it, give it off, give it off, give down, it, down. Give it. Lars and the Real Girl is a movie that has no right to be as touching as it is, or at least that's what you might think based on the DVD box. Complete with a quote from Maxim, a uh, silly looking Ryan Gosling sitting on the box of a sex doll and a back of box description that completely misses a point. You very easily could see this on the shelf at Blockbuster and expect to find some kind of sophomoric sex comedy, when in fact it's a very sweet film that rewards anyone who's willing to let their guard down just a bit while watching it. I have a visitor. You have a... Uh... Lars, the main character played by Ryan Gosling, is a probably mentally ill and definitely shy 27-year-old who recoils from any kind of physical contact with others. He doesn't really like loud sounds and he spends a lot of time staring off into the distance alone in his bedroom. After his brother and sister-in-law move into his parents' old house though, something seems to change in him and he decides to soak a few grand into a real doll and pretend that it's his foreign girlfriend called Bianca. You know, Bianca's um, a missionary. Not just pretend either, but actually speaking to her even when they're alone with each other. Now, if you got the sense that he was conscious of what he was doing, you might think that this was a ploy on his part to reach out to people, one of your classic cries for help, but the script plays it really straight and it winds up being an admirable, if roundabout way of communicating without words that he wants to feel like he belongs to someone. Now that straightness is what really makes this film a wonderful surprise. In anyone else's hands, you'd expect this to turn out like some National Lampoon College movie or Laura's would wind up snapping and killing townspeople one by one, but instead it winds up being a really wonderful portrait of a community coming together to help a sick man. Now I don't think that would actually be what would happen in real life where Lars would either wind up being the star of a 10 million hit YouTube video or someone would just tell him about anime and he'd outgrow this little phase. Instead his co-workers and fellow church members all kind of play along in the hopes that doing so will help Lars break out of whatever is afflicting him. We're treated to some massively awkward scenes of people not knowing how to react to Bianca's presence. But for the most part, the film mildly indulges the audience with a lot of really touching moments of a group of people helping one of their own instead of making them feel like an outcast. Monday and Wednesdays, and then maybe all day Saturday. Yeah? Yeah, you sure? Okay with you? In a lot of ways, this film is kind of a fantasy. Not much of it really corresponds to the way I get the feeling things would play out in reality, but it keeps coasting along with such a gentle touch that you really don't think about it much. That's made easier by a great supporting cast, including the always wonderful Patricia Clarkson as Lars' doctor psychiatrist, who tries to engage him without being too obvious about things. Paul Schneider as Lars' completely baffled brother Gus is a source of many of the film's funniest moments, not to mention facial expressions, while Kelly Garner is really cute as a girl who has a rather absurd crush on Lars, despite his mental illness. And Gosling, of course, is as good as ever, letting himself live in the situation his character finds himself in without ever being tempted to wink at the audience. Lars and the Real Girl is a movie that works because it continually confounds expectations. Not only is the premise incredibly unique, but it exploits that premise in ways that are surprisingly deft and not at all what you might expect. This film opposes conventionality in a way that is very impressive. You can be told about its plot, but there's no way to really get it until you see the film itself. Contentedly walks a tightrope over terribleness, but manages to traverse that dangerous ground and winds up being a very interesting movie that has some unique things to say about the way people cope with traumas or simply the pain of being themselves. It's just a movie that's honest, and that alone would probably make it special in the current film landscape, but it has a lot of charm to it as well, and it's one of my favorite films of the last few years. Is more than just a game. I hope you get a chance to check out Lars on the Real Girl soon if you haven't seen it, and that if you do, you enjoy it. Thanks, and we'll see you next time here on Screen.com. Hello, Lars.